Chapter 4 The weeks following the initial trials were marked by an intense yet rewarding routine. Leon, Paul, and Elodie spent their days training relentlessly, supporting each other, and unwinding together in the evenings. These moments of camaraderie, shared meals, and late-night conversations forged unbreakable bonds among them. Every morning, Leon rose before dawn to join the football field where he met his teammates for early training sessions. The first rays of the sun tinted the grass a vibrant green, and the fresh air was filled with the scent of dew. The sound of balls hitting the ground, whistles and motivational shouts formed a familiar symphony that awakened in him an unwavering sense of determination. Come on, Leon, one more pass, his coach shouted, his face beaming with enthusiasm. Leon, breathless but resolute, executed the commands with growing precision. His teammates, although more experienced, respected him for his tenacity and team spirit. After each session, they all gathered in the dining hall for a well-deserved breakfast. The lively discussions around the table, punctuated by laughter and jokes, strengthened their camaraderie. Meanwhile, Elodie and Paul also followed busy schedules. Elodie trained with the union, perfecting her passes and goal shots with relentless rigor. The sharp sound of the ball against the floor echoed in the gym, each practice bringing her closer to her goal. Paul, at the dojo, learned to channel his strength with impressive mastery, his movements becoming increasingly fluid and precise with each session. Evenings were devoted to shared relaxation. After dinner, they often met in the common room where they discussed their day, shared their hopes and fears, and sometimes dreamed aloud about their future achievements. Do you think we could really participate in the Olympics one day? Elodie asked one evening, lying on the couch, eyes fixed on the ceiling. Why not? Paul replied with a smile. If we keep working hard, anything is possible. Leon nodded, but this emerging harmony was soon disrupted by the first signs of rivalry and jealousy. Damien Malisherbs, though showing a smiling and amiable face during official meetings, secretly plotted against Leon and his friends. He saw them as dangerous rivals, threatening his privileged position at the school. Damien, with his haughty demeanor and sneering smile, never missed an opportunity to remind Leon and the other scholarship students that they didn't belong. One evening, as Leon was returning alone to his dormitory after a long day of training, he heard whispers coming from a dark corner of the hallway. Approaching discreetly, he distinguished Damien's voice. I'm telling you, we need to bring them down, Damien was saying to his cronies. These scholarship kids think they can surpass us, but they don't know who they're dealing with. The next day, an important meeting was held in the school's grand hall. Albert Dubois took the floor, but this time his usually serene face bore signs of concern. Dear students, he began, it is our duty to inform you about the recent discussions regarding the future of our institution. The atmosphere immediately tensed. Leon and his friends exchanged worried glances. We have learned that Francis Pardon, the new Minister of Sports, is considering changing the funding and admission policies of sports schools, continued Dubois. These changes could significantly impact our ability to offer scholarships and maintain our philosophy of equal opportunity. Murmurs rose among the students, each trying to understand the implications of this news. Leon felt a wave of frustration and helplessness wash over him. How could they focus on their athletic goals with such a threat looming over them? After the meeting, the students gathered in small groups to discuss the situation. Leon, Paul, and Elodie found a quiet spot in the garden to share their thoughts. What does this mean for us? Elodie asked, her voice trembling with anxiety. Does it mean we could lose our scholarships? If I lose my scholarship, I won't be able to stay at Palmaru, and I'll have to return to my foster family. Leon worried. Maybe. Paul replied somberly. But we can't let this discourage us. We need to show everyone that we deserve to be here, no matter the obstacles. Paul is right, Leon said. We must keep fighting, proving our worth every day. And if Pardon wants to change things, then we will show that Palmaru's values are stronger than his policies. The following days were marked by palpable tension. Students and teachers, determined to maintain the school's spirit, couldn't ignore the growing shadow of Pardon's reforms. Discussions on the topic became increasingly frequent, and everyone tried to find ways to make their voices heard. One evening, 
As they gathered in the common room for one of their nightly discussions, Leon proposed an idea. What if we organized an Olympiad to show what we can achieve? A sort of challenge that would prove to everyone that we deserve our place here. Paul and Elodie exchanged approving looks. That's an excellent idea, Elodie said enthusiastically. It could attract the attention of the teachers and administrators and perhaps even influence the upcoming decisions. Agreed, Paul nodded. But it has to be well organized and everyone must participate. They spent the evening planning their event, discussing the details and how they could mobilize the other students. Despite his initial doubts, Leon felt a new energy surge through him. Perhaps, despite the challenges and rivalries, they could really make a difference. The following days, Leon, Paul, and Elodie dedicated themselves to organizing. They spoke to their peers, solicited the help of teachers, and set up an ambitious program. Their enthusiasm became contagious, and soon the whole school was preparing for the event. The much-anticipated day of the Olympiad finally arrived. The air was charged with excitement and nerves as the students gathered on the school's vast sports field. Colorful banners fluttered gently in the wind and enthusiastic laughter echoed in the morning air. Albert Dubois, true to his pedagogical approach, left the students autonomous to split into two teams. This method favored collective decision-making but also provided an opportunity for more cunning maneuvers. Damien Malisherbs, always ambitious and calculating, took the lead in organizing the selections. Listen, Damien suggested smoothly, why don't we form two balanced teams? I'll take care of making the groups. Under his friendly facade, Damien worked behind the scenes to gather all his friends and allies into an elitist team. His goal was clear, to crush the opposing team, mainly composed of scholarship students, to prove the superiority of privileged students and thus reinforce Francis Pardon's elitist vision. Leon, Elodie, and Paul, aware of Damien's intentions, decided to form an opposing team. They sought out those who, like them, valued merit and fairness. Don't worry, Leon said to his friends. We're going to show everyone that we can succeed together, no matter where we come from. Elodie nodded, determined. Damien can manipulate the teams as much as he wants. We're going to prove that it's not elitism that counts. Paul, true to his usual calm, added, We'll fight with everything we've got. We'll show them what unity really means. With the teams formed, the Olympiad began. The events would continue throughout the day, each discipline testing the team's skills and cohesion. The first event was a relay race. Damien, at the peak of his arrogance, chose to face Leon in the first round. The tension was palpable as the runners took their positions. Ready to lose, Renart? Damien taunted with a sneering smile. Leon didn't respond. He focused, his mind entirely on the race. The starting gun fired, and the runners took off. Leon, driven by the energy and support of his teammates, ran with fierce determination. Despite Damien's initial lead, Leon managed to catch up and overtake him in the final meters, passing the baton to LOD amid the cheers of his team. LOD, light and swift as the wind, maintained the lead. Her face was a mask of concentration as she ran, ignoring the pain and fatigue. She passed the baton to Thomas, a first-year scholarship student who excelled in sprinting, allowing them to gain a few more lengths. He finally handed the baton to Paul, who, with his power, finished the race in style. Their team won the first victory, proving that merit could overcome privilege. The following events were just as intense. Determined not to let victory slip away, Damien used every possible strategy to destabilize Leon's team. But Leon, Elodie, and Paul remained united and focused. Their unifying attitude inspired their teammates, and each member of their team gave their best. During the handball competition, Elodie particularly stood out. She led her team with incredible confidence, scoring goal after goal despite Damien and Justin's desperate attempts to block her. You can't win, Granier. Damien taunted after a series of unsuccessful attacks. We're already winning, Elodie retorted, her eyes sparkling with defiance, not because we're the best individually, but because we're a team. Paul, meanwhile, excelled in the judo events. His mastery and inner strength allowed him to secure decisive victories. He faced his opponents with calm and respect, each victory strengthening his team's cohesion. The final event, a football match, would determine the outcome of the Olympiad. The two teams were tied, and the atmosphere was electric. 
Leon stood at the center of the field, his mind entirely focused on the game. He knew everything depended on this moment. The match began in a frenzy of rapid movements and precise passes. True to his aggressive strategy, Damien tried to dominate the game through force and intimidation, but Leon and his team countered with intelligence and cohesion. A few minutes before the end, the score was still tied. Leon felt the adrenaline surge through him. He knew this was the decisive moment. He skillfully dribbled between the defenders, avoiding Damien's tackle attempts. Reaching the 20-meter line, he looked up and saw Elodie perfectly positioned near the goal. Without hesitation, Leon made a precise pass to Elodie. She received the ball with agility and, with a powerful shot, scored the winning goal. The final whistle blew and their team erupted in joy. Cheers echoed across the field as Leon, Elov, and Paul came together to celebrate. We did it, Elodie cried, tears of joy in her eyes. We showed everyone what we're truly worth. Yes, Paul replied with a serene smile. We proved that merit and unity can overcome any obstacle. Leon, arms around his friends, felt a deep sense of satisfaction. They had not only won the Olympiad, but also proven that the values of merit and fairness triumphed over privilege and scheming. Albert Dubois, observing the scene, felt great pride in his students. Their victory was a promise of a future where Palmeru's values would continue to shine, despite challenges and attempts at change. The Olympiad ended on a note of optimism and celebration. Leon, LOD, and Paul knew they were ready to face future challenges, united by an unbreakable friendship and unwavering determination. Their victory was not only a sporting one, but also a moral one, establishing their status as promising leaders within the school. They parted that night with promises of future exploits and adventures, knowing that their journey at the prestigious Olympic school had only just begun.